on our instas okay okay we've got a different backdrop okay it's currently sunday i never film on a weekend anymore i, I tend to try and keep weekends to myself now but i felt like filming today i felt like filming we've been for a really nice walk Matt and the boys are now upstairs playing on the PlayStation, so I thought, you know what, I'm going to film, but I couldn't film upstairs in the usual, with the usual backdrop, because they're all upstairs, so I've come out the way to film. So today we're filming in the office. But you've seen the thumbnail, today we're ranking the Harry Potter films. This is all personal preference, this isn't the, this isn't the sort of thing where it's like, this is the only opinion, and this is how they are being ranked. Although my opinion should be the only one that matters, because I am the chosen one. <laughs> And I love all the films, guys, all of them. We do, we do. And I did find this very hard. I've wanted to do this video for a while. And I find it really hard picking favourites when it comes to Harry Potter. As you've seen my top tens and things. I don't put them as a ten being the worst and first being the best. I just sort of reel off. You'll know what I mean if you've seen my top 10 videos. But I've actually ranked the films, guys, in my opinion or personal preference of Real Slip. So how I've gone about it is I've done it as a Susie, what are your go-tos? Your go-tos. When when we want to sit and watch a Harry Potter film, I tend to we don't watch them in order unless we're doing a marathon. So I have my go-tos. So I've kind of done it in a we're gonna do it obviously eighth being the least go-to and first being the one that I go to at the most. Please have in mind that this does change, my list does change, it definitely does change. Um, my go-to from two months ago, like my number one go-to from two months ago isn't actually the go-to at the minute for me, but they do alternate and the, the least two are always my least two go-tos. But yeah, if you wanna hear how I've ranked them anyway, then keep on watching. I am rambling. And if this is the first time you've seen my face, hello and welcome to my channel. If you would like to become a Potter Puppet with us, please hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you're notified every time I upload a video. All my social medias are linked in the description of this video. Go see what I'm up to on those. And guys, I am trying my hardest to get to my next big milestone of 2,000 subscribers. So I'd really appreciate you hitting that little, the little red subscribe button that's near my name. Go boop, go press it for me. I can wait. And also, I would like to give a massive thank you to my Patreons. They help me keep this channel running just that little bit more. If you'd like to know any more about Patreon, that is also linked in the description of this video. Go check it out. If you think it's for you, then come join us. Plus, I have merch. I have merch. Go get some merch. It's also linked. Everything is linked in the description of each video. Oh, let's start ranking these films, Susie. Just shut up. Okay, starting with number eight, my least go-to, it's Chamber of Secrets. Now, again, I love all the Harry Potter films. And when I say least go-to, it's not that I never pick it up because there are times when I think, do you know what, let's watch Chamber of Secrets because I haven't watched it in a while. It's just my least go-to. It's not one that I would tend to reach into my DVD cupboard to pull out to stick on the telly. I don't necessarily know why, um, because I do enjoy the film. Um, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's just obviously doesn't appeal to me as much as the other ones. I mean, we can't say that in the Chamber of Secrets there isn't enough action going on. There is so much action. It is jam-packed in Chamber of Secrets full of action and magicalness. It's amazing. But for some reason, it just happens to be my least go-to. Um, I don't know. I, I actually don't know. Let me think about it. I think maybe it burns down to, boils down to whatever you, whatever the saying is, that yes, it's jam-packed full of action and magicalness, but I prefer the action and magicalness in the other films. That's maybe what it is. I mean, I love Chamber of Secrets. I mean, it's where we're introduced to Mandrakes. It's where we're introduced to Polyjuice Potion. You know, we're, we're introduced to Gilderoy Lockhart. Obviously, yeah, we don't like him, but you have to admit the scenes with him in it are quite funny. We're introduced to Tom Riddle, which obviously he's not a great person, but it's more story unraveling. You know, we find out Tom Riddle obviously is Voldemort, you know, things like that. So there's quite, there's important key things within that film that we learn, which is great. The Chamber of Secrets itself. I mean, obviously it's a bad place, but it's gorgeous. Is anyone with me on that one? The Chamber of Secrets is, 
it's an amazing area it is one thing i have said this in a previous video i did a video it was a while ago now on things i'd love the warner brothers studio tour to bring to us and one of them is definitely the chamber of secrets could you imagine walking down that pathway you know there was water either side and at the end is that head thing i mean i would i would absolutely love that studio tour you could have a basilisk in one of the tunnels as well spot the basilisk oh my gosh that would be so much fun but yeah, like I said, it's not that I don't like Chamber of Secrets. For some reason, it's just a least go-to for me. It's um, it's really strange. But as we go through the list as well, you'll probably see a pattern. Um, and I will explain the pattern and, and things and obviously say at the end why I think it's the way it is. Um, but you might sort of twig before I even say anything. In seventh place is the Philosopher's Stone. Don't come at me. I know a lot of you that is your favourite it's i don't this we're not going on favorites i'm ranking my go-to's this is my go-to's philosopher's stone again um it's quite it's one that i don't go to literally the only time i think we put philosopher's stone on is when the kids really want it on or when we're doing a harry Potter marathon so yeah i was questioning myself thinking susie why you know it's it's the film the first one it's the film it's where harry finds out he's a wizard it's so magical it's again it's full of action and and things so it's it's not that it's not boring none of them are boring films i did think is it my least go-to because it's obviously at, at one time guys think about it at one time that was the only harry potter you could watch it was the only one out but thinking about it, obviously, I don't watch that one an awful lot now. And I've probably overtook, like, at one point, that was the one that I'd watched the most. But I've probably overtook that now because I, there's always a Harry Potter one in the house. I have said this before. I cannot go a week without watching Harry Potter. I have to have one on, especially when I'm having a bad day. I have said this before in a video. Harry Potter... I don't know they, they take me away they, they take me away from the world and as you can imagine they do get watched quite a lot especially in this past year so again i don't think it's because it's overwatched because i do think i've overtook with a different film we'll get to them so i was thinking what could it be i don't think philosopher's stone is has got as much action as say the chamber of secrets or any of the others for that matter but Philosopher's Stone it's completely different in the sense that it's where we're getting to know we're getting to know Harry we're getting to know the wizarding world obviously we need that sort of is it backstory is that the right words we need to know before the story starts because it's obviously going to be a long story so they have everything has to be explained sort of at the beginning in a sense am I making any sense at all um I don't know what it is. I wouldn't say Philosopher's Stone is boring at all. It's it's definitely one of the more magical ones and obviously really kid friendly. I, I mean, both my kids watch them all, um, but they do get quite dark obviously. But number one is definitely full of that nice magical. There's a lot of nice magicalness in the first one. And then that's it, they just go really dark. Um, but is is that why? Is it too not i don't know do i prefer the dark magic i am a ravenclaw honest but everything's so heartwarming in the philosopher's stone it i mean there's heartwarming moments in them all but you know when harry when harry potter starts obviously harry's being really mistreated and then he gets he's in hogwarts and he's absolutely amazed his little face it's so lovely when he walks into the great hall for the first time with the two people how obviously um Harry, no, that is Harry, Hermione and Ron, um, when they walk into the Great Hall together, um, that was actually a natural reaction, apparently they hadn't seen the Great Hall until they filmed it, and so those expressions on their faces, it was all real, and we were going on that journey with them, and it was really lovely, I love the Philosopher's Stone, just for some reason, I don't, it's not a go-to for me, it really isn't, like I said, maybe it's the darker things that I like, <gasps> I am a Ravenclaw honest. Now, in place six, I've actually shocked myself, but it had to go here. It had to go here when I was looking at all the others. Um, Deathly Hallows part two. I love that film. I love all the films. I will keep saying this to like, I don't know, justify myself. I don't know. There isn't a Harry Potter that I don't like. I love them all. With Deathly Hallows part two though, it makes me sad. 
it makes me sad throughout the film and it makes me sad at the end because we went to the cinema to see Deathly Hallows part two and um, this is where Matt got into Harry Potter so we were sat in the living room Deathly Hallows part two trailer came on the telly it was going to be in cinemas in like two weeks I think it was and I was like I just turned to him I need to go to the cinema to see this I haven't seen all of them in the cinema um I've seen Near, I think I've seen nearly all of them in the cinema, but I know for a fact there was a, maybe two at most that I didn't go see at the cinema. But I really wanted to go see the last one at the cinema. And I said to Matt, I want to go with you. And he said, that's fine, but I haven't watched the other Harry Potters. And I was like, I just bought a house with you. What do you mean? You've never seen Harry Potter. But bless him, he did say that he would watch them all so that he could go to the cinema with me. And we literally watched one a night in a row, just like a marathon straight through in a week. And uh, we tried to do it as close as we could so that it was really fresh in his head for when we went to see it. And I remember sitting in the cinema and I cried so much through that film and I still do now. It's really, really sad. It's a really sad film. It's amazing and it's really good, but it is really sad. And at the end, I can remember at the cinema, the credits came up and I just cried again. <laughs> I was like, that's it. It's, it's over. And I hated it. So there is no other reason. That is the reason that it's not a go-to for me. It, it's a go-to. I mean, I watched it the other day. I really like the film, but like I said, it's the end. It's the end, and I don't like it. There are there are people that I love that die. I mean, there are throughout the whole films, but you know that it's a massacre, that film. But yeah, that is the reason why Deathly Hallows is rank six. Okay, so in fifth place is Prisoner of Azkaban. And it's so weird because I really love that film. I love them all. I keep justifying myself. Honestly, I love all of them. But Prisoner of Azkaban is in fifth place um, as it's not as much of a go-to. I don't know why. I really don't know why. This is just really confusing me because I love all the films. I find it so strange that I love all of them, absolutely all of them. So you'd think that I'd probably alternate all the time, but I don't. I have my go-tos. It's really strange. Is anybody else like that? Let me know in the comments. Or am I just a complete weirdo? Don't answer that. I mean, Prisoner of Azkaban is great. I mean, oh, we've got the night bus. I mean, come on, we've got the night bus in there. Um, Sirius Black, we meet him and I love that twist. I absolutely love that twist. Obviously, we think this Sirius Black is he's gonna, he's trying to hunt Harry down. He's trying to, you know, finish his job off and kill Harry for Voldemort. And, but then it's a complete twist. There may be spoilers if you haven't seen the Harry Potter, so if you don't want to know, I suggest you turn it off now. But then we find out that he wasn't after Harry, he was after Ron's rat, Scabbers. Obviously, Peter Pettigrew. I hate that name, I hate saying that man's name. So I really do like the twist in that film. I, I, I they go to Hogsmeade, they go to Hogsmeade. It's the first time we see Hogsmeade and it's, it's amazing. It's such an amazing film, but for some reason, it's not a go-to for me. Um, I I think about a month ago it was my go-to but that was a weird one because it doesn't tend to be my go-to at all but yeah that that was a go-to um yeah it's really weird does anybody else do what I do do you have go-to's but you don't understand why because you love absolutely every single one of the films oh my days I wanted to do this video but I'm like this is really hard to explain why it's really really hard I love Prisoner of Azkaban, I love Philosopher's Stone, I love Chamber of Secrets, I love Deathly Hallows Part 2, but there's just little, I mean Deathly Hallows Part 2, obviously, like I said, it's the end and it upsets me, and it still upsets me when those end credits come up, and I'm like, it all comes flooding back from when I was at the cinema, and it was, yeah, it was really upsetting, and that's why I don't, it's not a go-to. I do watch it, just not as often as the others. I will say what I do love about Prisoner of Azkaban is that it does start to get really dark in that one. And I do like the darker. Um, I don't know why. I don't know if it's because I'm an adult. I haven't got a clue, but I have always liked the darker ones, always. And I have been a Harry Potter fan since the first Harry Potter, not the book, the film. Because I have said before, I hadn't read the books until up about three years ago now, maybe four years ago. I hadn't read the books, but I'm trying to think. I was about 11 or 12 when the first film came out. So 20 years. Oh my days, I'm old. 
My dad walked in from the shop with the Philosopher's Stone when it first came out on VHS tape. So all you kids watching this, do you know, go Google VHS tape because you probably won't know what that is. And I'm going to say this now, there's a part in Prisoner of Azkaban where Daniel Radcliffe's acting sucks big time. I'm sorry, I can't act, I can't say anything. But there is a part in Prisoner of Azkaban where obviously he snuck to Hogsmeade, he snuck to Hogsmeade with his invisibility cloak through the secret passage, blah, blah, blah. And he overhears McGonagall obviously talking about Sirius, that he's his godfather, and um, that he killed Harry's parents. That's what she said, wasn't it? And he kind of puts, he's got his invisibility cloak still on, he storms out the pub, ha um, Hermione and Ron follow him, he's sat on a rock, Hermione pulls the thing down. And it's just the way he says what he says, and it's his face, he kind of goes, what was it he says? Um, I can't remember now what he says to her, but he's on about Sirius, and obviously he's really, really angry at this point because he's just found some stuff out. I nearly swore them. And he kind of goes, <laughs> he's talking, and then he goes quiet, and he's talking to Amanda because he's really, really angry, and he's like, ah. <laughs> if I'm honest, thinking about it, I think films one, two, and three are not go-tos as much as the rest because of the acting maybe maybe that's what it is because some of the acting does make me cringe obviously i know they were children but they weren't actors and actresses were they um they kind of learned as they went on and they did really well they did a lot better than i would have been able to have done or still would be able to do i don't think i could act maybe i should try but i'm starting to think that that might be what it is but uh, it does i think prisoner of azkaban some of the acting in it, I'm just crossing my legs, my leg hurts, hang on. I think some of the acting makes me cringe. Um, the story's great and there are things in there that I love. I love, like I said, the twist with Sirius Black. There is a lot to love about that film, but I think it's the acting. But yeah, that's another least to go to. Okay, so in fourth place, we're getting into the top four now, guys, for my rankings. In fourth place, it's Deathly Hallows Part 1. Now, Deathly Hallows Part 1 has been a number one before. It has been a number one before. But Deathly Hallows Part 1, I, I love that one. I love the travelling. Um, I went to the film location, you know, when Harry and Hermione, Harry and Hermione, not Ron, Ron had a hissy fit and went off. Harry and Hermione were on some rocks. Um on like a, a, a big hill. Well, I went there last year and filmed it. Um, if you haven't seen it, I will link it up there. Go check it out. It's pretty awesome up there. I have been there so many times and it was kind of like an an accident. We were going anyway and then Matt said, why don't you film it? So it was like, oh, okay, I'll film it, of course. I, it's not that I forgot it was a Harry Potter location, a film location. It's just, I kind of, because I've already, I've always been there even as a child. So it was, yeah, it was fun to film as well, but definitely go check that out because it was it's really, really cool up there. But yeah, I love the travelling. I I love how dark it is. I think it's um I think it's in fourth place because I do find it lacks a lot of action. There isn't like as much action in Deathly Hallows Part One. Obviously we have a very sad death in in there. But for me, the, obviously there's a lot of action but not action action as the others oh my days even some of the ones that aren't like it's probably the least action that is probably the film for me with the least action in it but it is still a go-to this is really strange the more and more i think about it how these are ranked like why is that a go-to more than chamber of secrets let's say, because Chamber of Secrets, I mean, that is dark for those kids to get through. But yes, Deathly Hallows Part 1 is fourth place. It's definitely a go-to for me. Depends what mood I'm in. Um, but yeah, I do like a lot about that film. But there isn't that much action. I just, I think I love the travelling. Um, I mean, Ron has that hissy, hissy fit and oh my days. The first time, I remember the first time I ever saw that, ever saw that hissy fit, I was like, what is wrong with you? And I think I absolutely love that dance. Obviously, Hermione's really upset. Ron's gone. He's gone to sulk. And Harry wants to cheer her up. And they have that dance. I've heard that dance makes a lot of people cringe. 
and they've said that it looked uncomfortable i thought it looked really natural if i'm honest i personally thought that was really nice they looked like they was having fun and she'd forgot about everything for a moment but obviously unfortunately when they stopped her face just went in third place is the half blood prints now this made me laugh when i was writing my rankings out because half blood prints it tends to be at number one but at the minute it's at number three i love the half blood prints i think half blood prints there's a lot of people that have this as a least favorite or a least go-to but for me half blood prints is definitely a go-to i love the change we see in malfoy um i know a lot of people don't like malfoy but this i can remember when i first saw half blood prints and i thought do you know what malfoy doesn't want to do this he really didn't and then obviously we learned that malfoy's life was in danger so uh, yeah but it's like even in um definitely hallows part one ha um draco knew that that was harry that had just arrived at malfoy manor but he didn't say anything he didn't want to say anything but in half blood prince we spoke about that one in half blood prince we do see um a bit of a change um a lot of people say that he's a coward i think there's a lot more to it than that and then we see his mom she's worried for malfoy she goes to obviously snake for help um bellatrix she just do not care she's amazing that woman sorry sorry guilty pleasure i love bellatrix the strange lover but yeah i like the change we see in draco even though it's a sad change um i love that the half blood prince is snape i absolutely love everything about that um obviously the change with malfoy let's go back to malfoy the things that he has to do like with the necklace with the um what's it called the drink i can't remember what is it mead is it mead mead i don't even know i can't remember but obviously that that was to that was to do with malfoy wasn't it but malfoy had oh my days he just looked so uncomfortable bless him um but yeah i really did like that one of the worst deaths happening there for me um i really loved Dumbledore, and i can remember the first time we watched that film and obviously at the end poor Dumbledore dies and I can remember thinking eh, don't be silly and then it was like everyone was crying over him and it was like this what this has actually happened but I just didn't think that was going to happen I just really really didn't or that I just really couldn't believe I didn't want it to happen and it did um but yeah that was it, it's one of the saddest deaths for me in there but yeah I loved the change of Draco i loved the half blood prints i love slughorn obviously that was a fun thing to you know a fun little side thing to add obviously slughorn was a big part of it because of needing the memory and things like that and obviously that was another reason why i like this film because that memory of slughorn because obviously slughorn was telling tom riddle he sort of befriended tom riddle not knowing how bad he was obviously um we learn about the horcruxes because tom questions slughorn about the horcruxes so we learn a bit about the horcruxes and we learn about the diary we learn about quite a lot of the horcruxes and everything and it's things start to unravel in there and we learn about snape a little bit more in that film as well i just really like it i think that film it feels like some pieces are coming together I think I think that's what I'm trying to say but it is a definite go-to I absolutely love half blood prints in second place guys it's Goblet of Fire I love that film they're all jam-packed with action I've said this numerous times throughout this video but Goblet of Fire it's the Yule Ball oh my days the Yule Ball guys wouldn't you love to go I honestly love that whole aesthetic i i love the yule ball i love the triwizard tournament I, I love everything about that i don't know what my favorite task was um maybe the the lake maybe the lake i don't know i love the maze i think to be fair i think the dragon one's my least favorite out of the tasks um i really like the maze i don't know why I've got a thing about mazes. I really like mazes. I find them really magical for some reason. I ain't got a clue. But yeah, there's so much I love about Goblet of Fire. And 
I just, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I really don't know what it is. The try was a tournament, the, the, the Yule Ball. I love the twist with Mad Eye Moody that isn't Mad Eye Moody and it's Bike Crouch Jr. I absolutely love that. Um, I love twists in films, I really do. Like Prisoner of Azkaban, I love when we find out about Sirius. And yeah, I absolutely love that Mad Eye is not actually Mad Eye and it's like, oh my days. And yeah, you kind of, even though when I watch them again and again and again, obviously now I know what's really real and not and who's really good and who's not. But <laughs> I think especially with Half-Blood Prince, at that moment when Snape stands there and he's like, I'm the Half-Blood Prince, I still, there's a meme, there's a meme, if I can find it, I I'll put it up. But there's a meme and it's just like, when they find out, <laughs> and it's me every time, every time, even though I know it's coming, every time. But I love seeing Harry in these tasks. I love seeing Harry in these tasks. He's really put under pressure and it's like watching, seeing how he's going to react, how he's, how he's going to work under pressure. That's quite sick actually, watching a child go into a dangerous task, seeing if they're going to live or die and enjoying watching it. Oh my days, that is sick Susie. And of course we all love a bit of Cedric. Obviously Cedric comes into play here and obviously ends as well. And obviously we get to see other schools mix with Hogwarts, obviously because they're joining. Obviously it, it takes place at Hogwarts that year. And I just really like it. I, I love Durmstrang and the Bay Batons. There's a point. Where was Ill for Morney? Like, did they not join in on these? Can anyone answer me that? I'm not sure. Was it just like certain schools that did it? Oh, did it, was American school... When... Sorry, I'm kind of questioning myself now, aren't I? So you, you had Durmstrang, Bay Batons and... Hogwarts that joined together, but what about the other schools? Did they not do this? Am I missing something? Am I forgetting something? Somebody help me in the comments! But yeah, I absolutely love seeing these schools get together and um, making new friends and obviously at the same time they are a bit of competition to who's gonna win the Triwizard Cup. But yeah, I think I think I've covered it. That's why Goblet of Fire is second place for me. But now we're going to go on to first place. And if you've remembered the others, you obviously know what my first place is. But my first place is Order of the Phoenix. Now, again, I think Order of the Phoenix isn't necessarily a lot of people's go-tos. We'll call them go-tos. It's like a least favourite or a least go-to for a lot of people. But I love the Order of the Phoenix. Absolutely love it. We learned about Grimmel Place, we learned to hate Umbridge, because yeah, she makes that film. I think what I love is that when you get to that fifth film, Order of the Phoenix, it's like, obviously the same characters there and we see new ones as usual, but it's different. There's somebody different trying to take over the school. It's completely different. The Ministry of Magic are trying to get involved. And I think I just like that different side to it. It's really dark. Umbridge is so evil, but for some reason, it's been said by so many people, and I agree, we love to hate her. Absolutely love to hate her. The actress did a fabulous job, really, really did, of Professor Dolores Umbridge. Obviously, this is where we get Dumbledore's army. We see a lot of people work together. Um, obviously, with Harry, a lot of people didn't believe him about Voldemort coming back and things because nobody saw it, obviously, apart from Cedric as well, but Cedric didn't live to tell the tale. But obviously so many people just went against Harry, went, went against Dumbledore, but throughout the Order of the Phoenix, you had them believe in him. And let's not forget our Luna. Luna Lovegood comes in the fifth film. She's absolutely amazing. She's literally, I'm not going to say my favourite witch, but she is definitely on that top for me. She is one of my favourite witches. Bellatrix the Strange is one of my favourite witches. <laughs> but yeah, with Order of the Phoenix, I think it's because it's a bit different. It's like Deathly Hallows Part 1. It's not actually situated in the school. It's obviously they're out and about, they're trying to find Horcruxes, and they're trying to just work life out, really. Trying to live, trying to survive. Trying to save the wizarding community. But yeah, I think, I think that's what it is with Order of the Phoenix. It's different. I love to hate Umbridge, like so many of us do. 
Um, a lot goes on in Dumbledore's army where I'm just repeating what I've said. But you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Does anyone get what I mean? So there you go, guys. I have ranked them from eight to one. So, and I'm, I can't even remember how I ranked them now. Number eight was A Chamber of Secrets. Number seven, A Philosopher's Stone. Number six, A Deathly Hallows Part Two. Number five, Prisoner of Azkaban. Number four, Deathly Hallows Part One. Number three, Half-Blood Prince. Number two, Goblet of Fire. And number one, Order of the Phoenix. That is how I'm ranking the films. Like I said, give it a couple of weeks, my list will change. It will change because it always does, but I genuinely cannot pick a favourite. I can't pick a favourite, but I can pick them in a sense as my go-tos. So I have just gave you a list of my go-tos, my go-tos. Uh, Chamber of Secrets is one that I very rarely pick out unless we're doing a marathon or one of the kids wants to put it on. Same with Philosopher's Stone, not necessarily a go-to. But I think, this is what I was saying, there's like a, a pattern. They get really dark and I know they're not in order because obviously they get darker and darker and darker as the films go on. But in my opinion, I don't know, Order of the Phoenix is so dark. I mean, Deathly Hallows Part 2 is the darkest. It is the darkest. We've said it's a massacre in that film. But for me, Order of the Phoenix... Oh my days, Umbridge is cruel. She she literally abuses children. And it's like, what? That's not right. But what did you think to my rankings? I know you want to tell me off in the comments, but you know, let me know how you rank them. What are your go-tos? Or do you look at them as favourites? Do you have a least favourite that you actually don't like the film? We're not comparing to books. We're not comparing to books in this video. It's literally just talking about the film. So don't compare them to books. Just look at the film itself. Like, what don't you like about the film? What you love about the film? Or are you a bit like me? It's not necessarily that you don't like the film. It's just a, not a go-to. I think it's really weird. I've never thought about it until doing this video. Um, I, I just did my list of rankings, how I feel at the moment, obviously. And But as, reeling, as I'm reeling them off, I'm thinking, why is that a least go-to? It's an absolutely amazing film. But it's just one that I don't pick up and put on as much as the others. But like I said, I love all of them. I find it really weird how my brain's working over all this. But yeah, have a, have a natter with me. Have a chat with me in the comments, guys. You know, I love it when you do. Give me your list of rank. Give me your ranking list. Let's have a conversation about this. But yeah, I'm going to go because I'm just going to ramble now. Absolutely love doing this video as always. Please give this a massive thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And um, yeah, I'll see you all in my next video. Bye, Buds Puppets.